Watch us on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast and support us on Patreon. Thanks for stopping by. Eukaryotes are organisms whose cells have a nucleus enclosed within a nuclear envelope. Eukaryotes belong to the domain Eukaryona, or Eukarya. Their name comes from the Greek epsilon, eu, well or good, and cap or upsilon omicron nu, carion, nut or kernel. The domain Eukaryota makes up one of the domains of life in the three domain system. The two other domains are bacteria and archaea, together known as prokaryotes, and the eukaryote are usually now regarded as having emerged in the archaea in or as a sister of the now cultivated Asgard archaea. Eukaryotes represent a tiny minority of the number of living organisms, however, due to their generally much larger size, their collective worldwide biomass is estimated to be about equal to that of prokaryotes. Eukaryotes emerged approximately 2.1 to 1.6 billion years ago, during the Proterozoic Eon, likely as flagellated phagotrophs. Eukaryotic cells typically contain membrane-bound organelles, such as mitochondria and Golgi apparatus, and chloroplasts can be found in plants and algae. These organelles are unique to eukaryotes, although primitive organelles can be found in prokaryotes. As well as being unicellular, eukaryotes may also be multicellular and include many cell types forming different kinds of tissue. In comparison, prokaryotes are typically unicellular. Animals, plants, and fungi are the most familiar eukaryotes. Other eukaryotes are sometimes called protists. Eukaryotes can reproduce both asexually through mitosis and sexually through meiosis and gamete fusion. In mitosis, one cell divides to produce two genetically identical cells. In meiosis, DNA replication is followed by two rounds of cell division to produce four haploid daughter cells. These act as sex cells, gametes. Each gamete has just one set of chromosomes, each a unique mix of the corresponding pair of parental chromosomes resulting from genetic recombination during meiosis. History of the concept The concept of the eukaryote has been attributed to the French biologist Edouard Chatton, 1883-1947. The terms prokaryote and eukaryote were more definitively reintroduced by the Canadian microbiologist Roger Staney and the Dutch-American microbiologist C.B. Ben Neal in 1962. In his 1937 work Titers et Travaux Scientifiques, Chatton had proposed the two terms, calling the bacteria prokaryotes and organisms with nuclei in their cells eukaryotes. However he mentioned this in only one paragraph, and the idea was effectively ignored until Chatton's statement was rediscovered by Stanier and Van Neel. In 1905 and 1910, the Russian biologist Konstantin Marischkowski, 1855-1921, argued that plastids were reduced cyanobacteria in a symbiosis with a non-photosynthetic, heterotrophic host that was itself formed by symbiosis between an amoeba-like host and a bacterium-like cell that formed the nucleus. Plants had thus inherited photosynthesis from cyanobacteria. In 1967, Lynn Margulis provided microbiological evidence for endosymbiosis as the origin of chloroplasts and mitochondria in eukaryotic cells in her paper, On the Origin of Metosing Cells. In the 1970s, Carl Woes explored microbial phylogenetics, studying variations in 165 ribosomal RNA. This helped to uncover the origin of the eukaryotes and the symbiogenesis of two important eukaryote organelles, mitochondria and chloroplasts. In 1977, Woes and George Fox introduced a third form of life, which they called the Archaebacteria. In 1990, Woes, Otto Candler, and Mark L. Wheelis renamed this the Ar Archaea. In 1979, G. 
W. Gould and G. J. Dring suggested that the eukaryotic cell's nucleus came from the ability of gram-positive bacteria to form endospores. In 1987 and later papers, Thomas Cavalier-Smith proposed instead that the membranes of the nucleus and endoplasmic reticulum first formed by unfolding a prokaryote's plasma membrane. In the 1990s, several other biologists proposed endosymbiotic origins for the nucleus, effectively reviving Marischkowski's theory. Cell Features Eukaryotic cells are typically much larger than those of prokaryotes, having a volume of around 10,000 times greater than the prokaryotic cell. They have a variety of internal membrane-bound structures, called organelles, and a cytoskeleton composed of microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments, which play an important role in defining the cell's organization and shape. Eukaryotic DNA is divided into several linear bundles called chromosomes, which are separated by a microtubular spindle during nuclear division. Eukaryote cells include a variety of membrane-bound structures, collectively referred to as the endomembrane system. Simple compartments, called vesicles and vacuoles, can form by budding off other membranes. Many cells ingest food and other materials through a process of endocytosis, where the outer membrane invaginates and then pinches off to form a vesicle. Probably, most other membrane-bound organelles are ultimately derived from such vesicles. Alternatively, some products produced by the cell can leave in a, a vesicle through exocytosis. The nucleus is surrounded by a double membrane, commonly referred to as a nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope, with pores that allow material to move in and out. Various tube and sheet-like extensions of the nuclear membrane form the endoplasmic reticulum, which is involved in protein transport and maturation. It includes the rough endoplasmic reticulum, where ribosomes are attached to synthesize proteins, which enter the interior space, or lumen. Subsequently, they generally enter vesicles, which bud off from the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. In most eukaryotes, these protein-carrying vesicles are released and further modified in stacks of flattened vesicles, cisterni, the Golgi apparatus. Vesicles may be specialized for various purposes. For instance, lysosomes contain digestive enzymes that break down most biomolecules in the cytoplasm. Peroxisomes are used to break down peroxide, which is otherwise toxic. Many protozoans have contractile vacuoles, which collect and expel excess water, and extrasomes, which expel material used to deflect predators or capture prey. In higher plants, most of a cell's volume is taken up by a central vacuole, which mostly contains water and primarily maintains its osmotic pressure. Mitochondria and Plastids Mitochondria are organelles found in all but one eukaryote. Mitochondria provide energy to the eukaryote cell by converting sugars into ATP. They have two surrounding membranes, each a phospholipid bilayer, the inner of which is folded into invaginations called cristae, where aerobic respiration takes place. The outer mitochondrial membrane is freely permeable and allows almost anything to enter into the intermembrane space, while the inner mitochondrial membrane is semi-permeable so allows only some required things into the mitochond mitochondrial matrix. Mitochondria contain their DNA, which has close structural similarities to bacterial DNA, and which encodes rRNA and tRNA genes that produce RNA, which is closer in structure to bacterial RNA than to eukaryote RNA. They are now generally held to have developed from endosymbiotic prokaryotes, probably proteobacteria. Some eukaryotes, such as the metaminads such as Giardia and Trichomonas, and the amoebozoan Pelomyxa, appear to lack mitochondria, but all have been found to contain mitochondrion-derived organelles, such as hydrogenosomes and metosomes, and thus have lost their mitochondria secondarily. 
They obtain energy by enzymatic action on nutrients absorbed from the environment. The metaminad monosircominoids has also acquired bilateral gene transfer, a cytosolic sulfur mobilization system that provides the clusters of iron and sulfur required for protein synthesis. The normal mitochondrial iron sulfur cluster pathway has been lost secondarily. Plants in various groups of algae also have plastids. Plastids also have their DNA and are developed from endosymbionts, in this case, cyanobacteria. They usually take the form of chloroplasts which, like cyanobacteria, contain chlorophyll and produce organic compounds, such as glucose, through photosynthesis. Others are involved in storing food. Although plastids probably had a single origin, not all plastid-containing groups are closely related. Instead, some eukaryotes have obtained them from others through secondary endosymbiosis or ingestion. The capture and sequestering of photosynthetic cells and chloroplasts occurs in many types of modern eukaryotic organisms and is known as kleptoplasty. Endosymbiotic origins have also been proposed for the nucleus and eukaryotic flagella. Cy cytoskeletal structures Many eukaryotes have long slender modal cytoplasmic projections, called flagella, or similar structures called cilia. Flagella and cilia are sometimes referred to as undulopodia, and are variously involved in movement, feeding, and sensation. They are composed mainly of tubulin. These are entirely distinct from prokaryotic flagelli. They are supported by a bundle of microtubules arising from a centriole, characteristically arranged as nine doublets surrounding two singlets. Flagella also may have hairs or mastogonemes, and scales connecting membranes and internal rods. Their interior is continuous with the cell cytoplasm. Microfilamental structures composed of actin and actin-binding proteins, example, alpha-actinin, fimbrin, filament are present in submembranous cortical layers and bundles, as well. Motor proteins of microtubules, example, dynein or kinesin and actin, example, myosins provide the dynamic character of the network. Centrioles are often present even in cells and groups that do not have flagella, but conifers and flowering plants have neither. They generally occur in groups that give rise to various microtubular roots. These form a primary component of the cytoskeletal structure and are often assembled over the course of several cell divisions, with one flagellum retained from the parent and the other derived from it. Centrioles produce the spindle during nuclear division. The significance of cytoskeletal structures is underlined in the determination of the shape of the cells, as well as there being essential components of migratory responses like chemotaxis and chemokinesis. Some protists have various other microtubule-supported organelles. These include the radiolaria and heliozoa, which produce axopodia used in flotation or to capture prey, and the haptophytes, which have a peculiar flagellum-like organelle called the haptonema. Cell, cell wall The cells of plants and algae, fungi, and most chromalveolates have a cell wall, a layer outside the cell membrane, providing the cell with structural support protection, and a filtering mechanism. The cell wall also prevents overexpansion when water enters the cell. The major polysaccharides making up the primary cell wall of land plants are cellulose, hemicellulose, and pectin. The cellulose microfibrils are linked via hemocellulosic tethers to form the cellulose-hemocellulose network, which is embedded in the pectin matrix. The most common hemocellulose in the primary cell wall is xyloglucan. Differences among eukaryotic cells There are many different types of eukaryotic cells, though animals and plants are the most familiar eukaryotes and thus provide an excellent starting point for understanding eukaryotic structure. Fungi and many protists have some substantial differences, however. Animal cell 
All animals are eukaryotic. Animal cells are distinct from those of other eukaryotes, most notably plants, as they lack cell walls and chloroplasts and have smaller vacuoles. Due to the lack of a cell wall, animal cells can transform into a variety of shapes. A phagocytic cell can even engulf other structures. Plant cell. Plant cells are quite different from the cells of other eukaryotic organisms. Their distinctive features are a large central vacuole, enclosed by a membrane, the tonoplast, which maintains the cell's turgor and controls the movement of molecules between the cytosol and sap. A primary cell wall containing cellulose, hemocellulose, and pectin, deposited by the protoplast on the outside of the cell membrane. This contrasts with the cell walls of fungi, which contain chitin, and the cell envelopes of prokaryotes, in which peptidoglycans are the main structural molecules. The, the plasma desmata pour in the cell wall that links adjacent cells and allow plant cells to communicate with adjacent cells. Animals have a different, but functionally analogous system of gap junctions between adjacent cells. Plastids, especially chloroplasts, organelles that contain chlorophyll, the pigment that gives plants their green color and allows them to perform photosynthesis. Bryophytes in seedless vascular plants only have flagelli and centrioles in the sperm cells. Sperm of cycads and ginkgo are large, complex cells that swim with hundreds to thousands of flagelli. Conifers, pinophana, and flowering plants, angiospermy, lack the flagelli and centrioles that are present in animal cells. Fungal cell. The cells of fungi are most similar to animal cells, with the following exceptions. A cell wall that contains chitin. Less compartmentation between cells, the hyphae of higher fungi have porous partitions called septa, which allow the passage of cytoplasm, organelles, and, sometimes, nuclei. So each organism is essentially a giant multinucleate supercell. These fungi are described as cenocytic. Primitive fungi have few or no septa. Only the most primitive fungi, chytrids, have flagella. Other eukaryotic cells. Some groups of eukaryotes have unique organelles, such as the cyanelles, unusual chloroplasts, of the glaucophytes, the haptonema of the haptophytes, or the ejectosomes of the cryptomonads. Other structures, such as pseudopodia, are found in various eukaryote groups in different forms, such as the lobos amoebozoans, or the reticulose foraminiferns. Reproduction Cell, cell division generally takes place asexually by mitosis, a process that allows each daughter nucleus to receive one copy of each chromosome. Most eukaryotes also have a life cycle that involves sexual reproduction, alternating between a haploid phase, where only one copy of each chromosome is present in each cell, and a diploid phase, wherein two copies of each chromosome are present in each cell. The diploid phase is formed by the fusion of two haploid gametes to form a zygote, which may divide by mitosis or undergo chromosome reduction by meiosis. There is considerable variation in this pattern. Animals have no multicellular haploid phase, but each plant generation can consist of haploid and diploid multicellular phases. Eukaryotes have a smaller surface area to volume ratio than prokaryotes, and thus have lower metabolic rates and longer generation times. The evolution of sexual reproduction may be a primordial and fundamental characteristic of eukaryotes. Based on a phylogenetic analysis, Dax and Roger proposed that facultative sex was present in the common ancestor of all eukaryotes. A core set of genes that function in meiosis is present in both Trichomonas vaginalis and Giardia intestinalis, two organisms previously thought to be asexual. Since these two species are descendants of lineages that diverged early from the eukaryotic evolutionary tree, 
it was inferred those core meiotic genes, and hence sex was likely present in a common ancestor of all eukaryotes. Eukaryotic species once thought to be asexual, such as parasitic protozoa of the genus Leishmania, have been shown to have a sexual cycle. Also, evidence now indicates that amoebae, previously regarded as asexual, are anciently sexual, and that the majority of present-day asexual groups likely arose recently and independently. Classification In antiquity, the two lineages of animals and plants were recognized. They were given the taxonomic rank of kingdom by Linnaeus. Though he included the fungi with plants with some reservations, it was later realized that they are quite distinct and warrant a separate kingdom, the composition of which was not entirely clear until the 1980s. The various single-cell eukaryotes were originally placed with plants or animals when they became known. In 1818, the German biologist George A. Goldfuss coined the word protozoa to refer to organisms such as ciliates, and this group was expanded until it encompassed all single-celled eukaryotes, and given their kingdom, the Protista, by Ernst Haeckel in 1866. The eukaryotes thus came to be composed of four kingdoms. Kingdom Protista Kingdom Plantae Kingdom Fungi Kingdom Animalia. The protists were understood to be primitive forms, and thus an evolutionary grade, united by their primitive unicellular nature. The disentanglement of the deep splits in the tree of life only really started with DNA sequencing, leading to a system of domains rather than kingdoms as top-level rank being put forward by Carl Woese, uniting all the eukaryote kingdoms under the eukaryote domain. At the same time, work on the protist tree intensified, and is still actively going on today. Several alternative classifications have been forwarded, though there is no consensus in the field. Eukaryotes are a clade usually assessed to be sister to Heimdallarchaeota in the Asgard grouping in the Archaea. In one proposed system, the basal groupings are the Apomoda, Diphoda, the Discoba, and the Lycozoa. The eukaryote root is usually assessed to be near or even in Discoba. A cl classification produced in 2005 for the International Society of Protistologists, which reflected the consensus of the time, divided the eukaryotes into six supposedly monophyletic supergroups. However, in the same year, 2005, doubts were expressed as to whether some of these supergroups were monophyletic, particularly the Chromalveolina, and a review in 2006 noted the lack of evidence for several of the supposed six supergroups. A revised classification in 2012 recognizes five supergroups. Archiplastida, or Primoplanty. Land plants, green algae, red algae, and glaucophytes. SAR supergroup. Straminopiles, brown algae, diatoms, etc., alveolina, and rhizaria, foraminifera, radiolaria, and various other amoeboid protozoa. Excavata. Various flagellate protozoa. Amoebozoa. Most lobos amoeboids and slime molds. Apistheconta. Animals, fungi, coenoflagellates, etc. There are also smaller groups of eukaryotes whose position is uncertain or seems to fall outside the major groups, in particular, Haptophyta, Cryptophyta, Centrohelena, Telonemia, Picozoa, Apusomonatida, Anseromonatida, Breviatia, and the genus Colodictium. Overall, it seems that, although progress has been made, there are still very significant uncertainties in the evolutionary history and classification of eukaryotes. As Roger and Simpson said in 2009, with the current pace of change in our understanding of the eukaryote tree of life, we should proceed with caution. In an
In an article published in Nature Microbiology in April 2016 the authors reinforced once again that the life we see around our plants, animals, humans and other so-called eukaryotes represent a tiny percentage of the world's biodiversity. They classified eukaryotes based on the inheritance of their information systems, as opposed to lipid or other cellular structures. Jillian F. Banfield of the University of California, Berkeley, and fellow scientists used a supercomputer to generate a diagram of a new tree of life based on DNA from 3,000 species including 2,072 known species and 1,011 newly reported microbial organisms whose DNA they had gathered from diverse environments. As the capacity to sequence DNA became easier, Banfield and the team were able to do metagenomic sequencing sequencing whole communities of organisms at once and picking out the individual groups based on their genes alone. Phylogeny The rRNA trees constructed during the 1980s and 1990s left most eukaryotes in an unresolved crown group not technically a true crown, which was usually divided by the form of the mitochondrial cristae, see crown eukaryotes. The few groups that lack mitochondria branched separately, and so the absence was believed to be primitive, but this is now considered an artifact of long branch attraction, and they are known to have lost them secondarily. As of 2011, there is widespread agreement that the Rhizaria belong with the Straminopiles and the Alveolina in a clade dubbed the SAR supergroup, so that Rhizaria is not one of the main eukaryote groups. Also that the Amoebozoa and Epistheconta are each monophyletic and form a clade, often called the Unicones. Beyond this, there does not appear to be a consensus. It has been estimated that there may be 75 distinct lineages of eukaryotes. Most of these lineages are protists. The known, known eukaryote genome sizes vary from 8.2 megabases MB, in Babesia bovis to 112,000 to 220,050 megabits in the dinoflagellate prorocentrum micans, showing that the genome of the ancestral eukaryote has undergone considerable variation during its evolution. The last common ancestor of all eukaryotes is believed to have been a phagotrophic protist with a nucleus, at least one centriole, and cilium, facultatively aerobic mitochondria, sex, meiosis and syngdomy, a dormant cyst with a cell wall of chitin, and or cellulose and peroxisomes. Later endosymbiosis led to the spread of plastids in some lineages. A global tree of eukaryotes from a consensus of phylogenetic evidence, in particular, phylogenomics, rare genomic signatures, and morphological characteristics, is presented in ADLETAL 2012 and Berkey 2014-2016, with the Picozoa having emerged within the Archaeplastida and Cryptista as its sister. Possibly, Zara's sister to the Haptista. In some analyses, the Hacrobia group, Haptophyta plus Cryptophyta, is placed next to Archaeplastida, but in other ones, it is nested inside the Archaeplastida. However, several recent studies have concluded that Haptophyta and Cryptophyta do not form a monophyletic group. The former could be a sister group to the SAR group, the latter cluster with the Archaeplastida, plants in the broad sense. The division of the eukaryotes into two primary clades, Biconts, Archaeplastida plus SAR plus Excavata, and Unicons, Amoebozoa plus Epistheconta, derived from an ancestral biflagellar organism and an ancestral uniflagellar organism, respectively, had been suggested earlier. A 2012 study produced a somewhat similar division, although noting that the terms unicons and biconts were not used in the original sense. sense. 
a highly converged and congruent set of trees appears in Durrell ETAL 2015, Rin ETAL 2016, Young ETAL 2017, and Cavalier Smith 2015, including the supplementary information resulting in a more conservative and consolidated tree. It is combined with some results from Cavalier Smith for the basal opomona. The main remaining controversies are the root and the exact positioning of the Rhodophyta and the Bicons Rosaria, Haptista, Cryptista, Picozoa, and Teleninia, many of which may be endosymbiotic eukaryote-eukaryote hybrids. Archaeplastida acquired chloroplasts, probably by endosymbiosis, of a prokaryotic ancestor related to a currently extant cyanobacterium, Gloia margarita lithophora. Cavalier Smith as tree. Thomas Cavalier Smith 2010, 2013, 2014, 2017, and 2018 places the eukaryotic tree's root between excavata, with ventral feeding groove supported by a microtubular root, and the grooveless euglenozoa, and monophyletic chromista, correlated to a single endosymbiotic event of capturing a red algae. The ETAL specifically support rooting the eukaryotic tree between a monophyletic discoba, Disacristida plus Jacobida, and an Amorphia diaphortix clade. Origin Eukaryotes The origin of the eukaryotic cell is a stone in the evolution of life since eukaryotes include all complex cells and almost all multicellular organisms. Many approaches have been used to find the first eukaryote and their closest relatives. The last eukaryotic common ancestor, Lika, is the hypothetically a biolo biological population. Eukaryotes have a set of signature features that differentiate them from other domains of life, including an endomembrane system and unique biochemical pathways such as sterene synthesis. A set of proteins called eukaryotic signature proteins, ESPs, was proposed to identify eukaryotic relatives in 2002, they have no homology to proteins known in other domains of life by then, but they appear to be universal among eukaryotes. They include proteins that make up the cytoskeleton, the complex transcription machinery, membrane sorting systems, the nuclear pore, as well as some enzymes in the biochemical pathways. Fossils The timing of this series of events is hard to determine. Null, 2006, suggests they developed approximately 1.6 to 2.1 billion years ago. Some acrotarchs are known from at least 1.65 billion years ago, and the possible alga grapania has been found as far back as 2.1 billion years ago. The geosophon-like fossil fungus Discagma has been found in paleosols 2.2 billion years old. Organized living structures have been found in the black shales of the Paleoproterozoic Francivillian B formation in Gabon, dated at 2.1 billion years old. Eukaryotic life could have evolved at that time. Fossils that are related to modern groups start appearing an estimated 1.2 billion years ago, in the form of red algae, though recent work suggests the existence of fossilized filamentous algae in the Vinaya Basin dating back perhaps to 1.6 to 1.7 billion years ago. Biomarkers suggest that at least stem eukaryotes arose even earlier. The presence of sterines in Australian shales indicates that eukaryotes were present in these rocks dated at 2.7 billion years old, although it was suggested they could originate from sample contamination. When, whenever their origins, eukaryotes may not have become ecologically dominant until much later, a massive uptick in the zinc composition of marine sediments 800 million years ago has been attributed to the rise of substantial populations of eukaryotes, which preferentially consume and incorporate zinc relative to prokaryotes. In April 2019, biologists reported that the very large medicivirus, or a relative, may have been responsible, at least in part, for the evolutionary emergence of complex eukaryotic cells from simpler prokaryotic cells. 
relationship to archaea. The nuclear DNA and genetic machinery of eukaryotes are more similar to archaea than bacteria, leading to a controversial suggestion that eukaryotes should be grouped with archaea in the clade Neomura. In other respects, such as membrane composition, eukaryotes are similar to bacteria. Three main explanations for this have been proposed. Eukaryotes resulted from the complete fusion of two or more cells, wherein the cytoplasm formed from a bacterium, and the nucleus from an archaean, from a virus, or a precell. Eukaryotes developed from archaea and acquired their bacterial characteristics through the endosymbiosis of a protomitochondrion of bacterial origin. Eukaryotes and archaea developed separately from a modified bacterium. Alternative proposals include The chronocyte hypothesis postulates that a primitive eukaryotic cell was formed by the endosymbiosis of both archaea and bacteria by a third type of cell, termed a chronocyte. This is mainly to account for the fact that eukaryotic signature proteins were not found anywhere else by 2002. The Universal Common Ancestor UCA, of the current tree of life was a complex organism that survived a mass extinction event rather than an early stage in the evolution of life. Eukaryotes and in particular eukaryotes, bacteria, and archaea evolved through a reductive loss so that similarities result from differential retention, retention of original features. Assuming no other group is involved, there are three possible phylogenies for the bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota, in which each is monophyletic. These are labeled 1 to 3 in the table below. The eocyte hypothesis is a modification of hypothesis 2 in which the archaea are paraphyletic. The table and the names for the hypotheses are based on Harish and Courland, 2017. In recent years, most researchers have favored either the three domains, 3D, or the eocyte hypothesis. An rRNA analysis supports the eocyte scenario, apparently with the eukaryote root in excavata. A cladogram supporting the eocyte hypothesis, positioning eukaryotes within archaea, based on phylogenomic analyses of the Asgard archaea. In this scenario, the Asgard group is seen as a sister taxon of the TAC group, which comprises Crenarchiona, formerly named Eocytes, Thaumarchiona, and others. This group is reported to contain many of the eukaryotic signature proteins and produce vesicles. In 2017, there has been significant pushback against this scenario, arguing that the eukaryotes did not emerge within the archaea. Cunha ETAL produced analyses supporting the three domains, 3D, or WOS hypothesis, and rejecting the eocyte hypothesis. Harish and Courland found strong support for the earlier two empires, 2D, or Mare hypothesis, based on analyses of the coding sequences of protein domains. They rejected the eocyte hypothesis as the least likely. A possible interpretation of their analysis is that the universal common ancestor, UCA, of the current tree of life was a complex organism that survived an evolutionary bottleneck, rather than a simpler organism arising early in the history of life. On the other hand, the researchers who came up with Asgard reaffirmed their hypothesis with additional Asgard samples. De details of the relation of Asgard archaea members and eukaryotes are still under consideration, although, in January 2020, scientists reported that Candidatus prometheoarchaeum syntrophicum, a type of cultured Asgard archaea, may be a possible link between simple prokaryotic and complex eukaryotic microorganisms about 2 billion years ago. Endomembrane System and Mitochondria The origins of the endomembrane system and mitochondria are also unclear. The phagotrophic hypothesis proposes that eukaryotic type membranes lacking a cell wall originated first, with the development of endocytosis, whereas mitochondria were acquired by ingestion as endosymbionts. 
The syntrophic hypothesis proposes that the proto-eukaryote relied on the proto-mitochondrion for food, and so ultimately grew to surround it. Here the membranes originated after the engulfment of the mitochondrion, in part thanks to mitochondrial genes. The hydrogen hypothesis is one particular version. In a study using genomes to construct supertrees, Pisani ETAL, 2007, suggests that, along with evidence that there was never a mitochondrion less eukaryote, eukaryotes evolved from a syntrophy between archaea closely related to thermoplasmatales and an alpha proteobacterium, likely a symbiosis driven by sulfur or hydrogen. The mitochondrion and its genome is a remnant of the alpha proteobacterial endosymbiont. The majority of the genes from the symbiont have been transferred to the nucleus. They make up most of the metabolic and energy-related pathways of the eukaryotic cell, while the information system, DNA polymerase, transcription, translation, is retained from archaea. Hypotheses Different hypotheses have been proposed as to how eukaryotic cells came into existence. These hypotheses can be classified into two distinct classes, autogenous models and chimeric models. Autogenous models Aut Autogenous models propose that a proto-eukaryotic cell containing a nucleus existed first and later acquired mitochondria. According to this model, a large prokaryote developed invaginations in its plasma membrane to obtain enough surface area to service its cytoplasmic volume. As the invaginations differentiated in function, some became separate compartments giving rise to the endomembrane system, including the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, nuclear membrane, and single membrane structures such as lysosomes. Mitochondria are proposed to come from the endosymbiosis of an aerobic proteobacterium, and it is assumed that all the eukaryotic lineages that did not acquire mitochondria became extinct, a statement criticized for its lack of falsifiability. Chloroplasts came about from another endosymbiotic event involving cyanobacteria. Since all known eukaryotes have mitochondria, but not all have chloroplasts, the serial endosymbiosis theory proposes that mitochondria came first. Chimeric models Chimeric models claim that two prokaryotic cells existed initially, an archaean and a bacterium. The closest living relatives of these appear to be Asgard archaeota and, distantly related, the alpha proteobacteria called the proto-mitochondrion. These cells underwent a merging process, either by a physical fusion or by endosymbiosis, thereby leading to the formation of a eukaryotic cell. Within these chimeric models, some studies further claim that mitochondria originated from a bacterial ancestor, while others emphasize the role of endosymbiotic processes behind the origin of mitochondria. The inside-out hypothesis the inside-out hypothesis, developed by cousins David and Buzz Baum, suggests the fusion between free-living mitochondria-like bacteria and an archaean into a eukaryotic cell happened gradually over a long period, instead of phagocytosis in a single goal. In this scenario, an archaean would trap aerobic bacteria with cell protrusions, and then keep them alive to draw energy from them instead of digesting them. During the early stages, the bacteria would still be part of direct contact with the environment, and the archaean would not have to provide them with all the required nutrients. But eventually, the archaean would engulf the bacteria, creating the internal membrane structures and nucleus membrane in the process. It is assumed the archaean group called halophiles went through a similar procedure, where they acquired as much as a thousand genes from a bacterium, way more than through the conventional horizontal gene transfer that often occurs in the microbial world, but that the two microbes separated again before they had fused into a single eukaryote-like cell. 
Based on the process of mutualistic symbiosis, the hypotheses can be categorized as the serial endosymbiotic hypothesis or theory, set, the hydrogen hypothesis, mostly a process of symbiosis where hydrogen transfer takes place among different species, and the syntrophy hypothesis. These hypotheses are discussed separately in the following sections. An ex expanded version of the inside-out hypothesis proposes that the eukaryotic cell was created by physical interactions between two prokaryotic organisms, and that the last common ancestor of eukaryotes got its genome from a whole population or community of microbes participating in cooperative relationships to thrive and survive in their environment. The genome from the various types of microbes would complement each other, and occasional horizontal gene transfer between them would be large to their benefit. This accumulation of beneficial genes gave rise to the genome of the eukaryotic cell, which contained all the genes required for independence. The Serial Endosymbiotic Hypothesis According to serial endosymbiotic theory, championed by Lynn Margulis, a union between a modal anaerobic bacterium, like Spirochaeta, and a thermoacidophilic crinarchium, like Thermoplasma, which is sulfatogenic in nature, gave rise to the present-day eukaryotes. This union established a modal organism capable of living in the already existing acidic and sulfurous waters. Oxygen is known to cause toxicity to organisms that lack the required metabolic machinery. Thus, the Archaean provided the bacterium with a highly beneficial reduced environment. Sulfur and sulfate were reduced to sulfide. In microaerophilic conditions, oxygen was reduced to water thereby creating a mutual benefit platform. The bacterium, on the other hand, contributed the necessary fermentation products and electron acceptors along with its motility feature to the archaean thereby gaining swimming motility for the organism. organism. From a consortium of bacterial and archaeal DNA originated the nuclear genome of eukaryotic cells. Spirochetes gave rise to the modal features of eukaryotic cells. Endosymbiotic unifications of the ancestors of alpha proteobacteria and cyanobacteria led to the origin of mitochondria and plastids respectively. For example, thiodendron has been known to have originated via an ectosymbiotic process based on a similar syntrophy of sulfur existing between the two types of bacteria Desulfobacter and Spirochaeta. However, such an association based on modal symbiosis has never been observed practically. Also, there is no evidence of archaeans and spirochetes adapting to intense acid-based environments. The Hydrogen Hypothesis In the Hydrogen Hypothesis, the symbiotic linkage of an anaerobic and autotrophic methanogenic archaean host with an alpha proteobacterium, the symbiont, gave rise to the eukaryotes. The host utilized hydrogen, H2, and carbon dioxide, CO2, to produce methane, while the symbiont, capable of aerobic respiration, expelled H2 and CO2 as byproducts of the anaerobic fermentation process. The host's methanogenic environment worked as a sink for H2, which resulted in heightened bacterial fermentation. Endosymbiotic gene transfer, EGT, acted as a catalyst for the host to acquire the symbiont's carbohydrate metabolism and turn heterotrophic in nature. Subsequently, the host's methane-forming capability was lost. Thus, the origins of the heterotrophic organelle, symbiont, are identical to the origins of the eukaryotic lineage. In this hypothesis, the presence of H2 represents the selective force that forged eukaryotes out of prokaryotes. The Syntrophy Hypothesis The Syntrophy Hypothesis was developed in contrast to the Hydrogen Hypothesis and proposes the existence of two symbiotic events. According to this theory, the origin of eukaryotic cells was based on metabolic symbiosis syntrophy, between a methanogenic archaean and a delta proteobacterium. 
This syntrophic symbiosis was initially facilitated by H2 transfer between different species under anaerobic environments. In earlier stages, an alpha proteobacterium became a member of this integration and later developed into the mitochondrion. Gene transfer from a delta proteobacterium to an archaean led to the methanogenic archaean developing into a nucleus. The archaean constituted the genetic apparatus, while the delta proteobacterium contributed towards the cytoplasmic features. This theory incorporates two selective forces at the time of nucleus evolution. Presence of metabolic partitioning to avoid the harmful effects of the coexistence of anabolic and catabolic cellular pathways and prevention of abnormal protein biosynthesis due to a vast spread of introns in the archaeal genes after acquiring the mitochondrion and losing methanogenesis. 6 plus serial endosymbiosis scenario. Pitts and Galbanon propose a complex scenario of 6 plus serial endosymbiotic events of archaea and bacteria, in which mitochondria and an Asgard related archaeona were acquired at a late stage of eukaryogenesis, possibly in combination, as a secondary endosymbiont. The findings have been rebuked as an artifact. Watch us on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Anchor. Breaker. Google Podcasts. Overcast. Pocket Casts. Radio Public. Spotify. Support us on Patreon. Thanks for stopping by. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.